Let us now discuss plasma in detail. We have seen that it has 90% water, little bit of inorganic substances, then there are proteins and other things. We will take all these things individually and understand their roles, uh, what function they play in our body. So let us start with the inorganic substance or ions. which are mainly ions. The main ions which are present in plasma include sodium ions, chloride ions, which are the main uh, ions responsible for maintaining the ionic balance in the blood or in the plasma. Other ions are calcium ions, which are present in less concentration, but they are present. Potassium ions, bicarbonate ions because when we talk of transport of gases, carbon dioxide is mainly transported as bicarbonate ions. So this is, these are the main ions which are present in plasma and they come under the category of inorganic substances or ions. The next thing which is present in plasma are dissolved gases. The respiratory gases, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide, small quantity or small percentage of these gases also goes as dissolved uh, respiratory gases. So oxygen and carbon dioxide as dissolved gases. The next thing which is present are certain waste material, <coughs> waste material which includes urea, uric, acid, ammonia and creatinine. These substances, they are to be taken to kidney so that they can be removed from the body. But from the place where they are produced to the removal place, it is transported through plasma. If these substances exceed their limits, then that condition is known as uremia. Now coming to the next category of substances which are present in plasma and those are proteins. And that is why these proteins are known as plasma proteins. So here we are calling this just protein or plasma proteins. And we will classify them into various categories. So plasma proteins would include serum, albumin, which is also written as albumin. So serum albumin or albumin, which is present in plasma. And its main role is osmoregulation. It helps in osmoregulation. If we understand the simple meaning of this word is actually holding on to water. So this albumin, it holds water in the blood. If there is deficiency of this albumin, then the water from the blood is going to move out and it accumulates in the tissues. And that condition is known as edema. And that is how we can understand the meaning of this osmoregulation. So why this water doesn't move out into the tissue and remains in the blood is because of these albumin, with, with these molecules, they hold on to water and that is how this osmoregulation is maintained. The next category, serum globulins. Serum globulins are also known as immunoglobulins. And they are written as Ig, immunoglobulins. And as the name tells us, they are responsible for providing immunity. So these immunoglobulins, they act as antibodies. These antibodies which are produced against the specific antigens. So there is albumin which is responsible for osmoregulation. There are immunoglobulins which provide us defense by 
formation of these antibodies. The next category of proteins can be considered or can be grouped as clotting proteins. Clotting proteins. And again, as the name tells us, these proteins help in blood clotting. We include fibrinogen and prothrombin in this category. And both these fibrinogen and prothrombin are responsible for blood clotting whenever there is a cut or an injury. We will study the process of coagulation later on, but these are the two main clotting proteins. So albumin is there, globulins are there and clotting proteins are also there. So we can categorize plasma proteins into these categories, three categories. The next thing which is present in plasma is an anticoagulant. And this anticoagulant which is present in our body is heparin which doesn't let the blood clot when it is circulating in our body. But whenever the blood vessel gets ruptured, its action is reduced or suppressed and the clotting proteins, they help in the process of blood coagulation. This is our defense mechanism so that blood loss from the body can be prevented. Another important role which is played by this plasma is uniform distribution of heat. So plasma helps in uniform distribution of heat. Heat is generated at different places wherever there are metabolic reactions taking place and we know no reaction is 100% efficient in our body. So some energy is lost in the form of heat. So wherever the heat is generated that heat should be taken from that place otherwise if it remains in that area that would result in increase in temperature in that area and that might affect the functioning of cells because we know that our enzymes are very specific to temperature. They have their optimum temperatures at which they can work. So this heat from the place where it is generated, it should be distributed evenly in our body. So that role is performed by plasma and this uniform distribution helps in maintaining homeothermy. So these substances are there plus there are certain intermediates like lactic acid and all. So let us talk about those substances also which are present in plasma. The next category of substances which are present in plasma can be considered or kept under the heading of food material. And this is actually the absorbed food material which is in the plasma because it gets absorbed from the intestine and then it has to be taken to the places where it can be utilized like liver. And this absorbed food material would include glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, other categories of fats like monoglyceride fats, monoglyceride fats and even glycerol. We have already discussed this in the process of digestion and absorption that fatty acid and these monoglyceride fats they are first converted into missiles and then chylomicrons which are transported by lymphatic system. And these lymphatic vessels, they pour these chylomicrons into the main circulation. So ultimately these chylomicrons are going to come into the blood. So these are present in the form of chylomicrons. But these are fats or fatty acids and monoglyceride fats. Now, when we are talking of these, we should also understand how much of glucose is normally present. So, 
normal glucose level which should be there is 80 to 100 milligrams per 100 milliliter of blood. This is considered as the normal sugar level. And because glucose is present in our blood, it is commonly known as the blood sugar. If the level of glucose exceeds in our body, if it exceeds 180 milligrams or more, then this glucose gets excreted out in urine excreted out in urine and that condition is known as diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia hyperglycemia and if there is a fall in blood glucose then the condition is known as hypoglycemia. So sugar level has to be normal and we know there are hormones which are regulating this blood sugar, insulin and glucagon. But in certain conditions, the sugar level exceeds that is diabetes mellitus hyper or hypo condition this is the normal value and glucose levels again when we uh, read the blood reports and we study the glucose levels we see it uh, under three heads it can be written as glucose level fasting when you have not eaten anything for eight hours post meal that is after two hours of uh, taking in a meal and then there is a random value uh, which can also be taken. So depending upon the conditions, these three values are taken. But this is considered as the normal uh, blood sugar level or blood glucose level. And these are the two conditions. If glucose level exceeds 180 milligram or if it is more than that, then that gets excreted out in urine. The condition is diabetes mellitus. And if sugar level falls, then that is called hypoglycemia and both these conditions could be uh, dangerous if not taken care of. So in food material, this is one important thing that we have to remember. Another thing which is or things which are present in blood are certain regulatory substances. And these regulatory substances can be hormones, vitamins or enzymes. So now hormones which are secreted by endocrine glands. Endocrine glands are ductless glands and they pour their secretion that is hormones in the blood and it is the plasma which is actually transporting these hormones. Vitamins, after they get absorbed, they are transported by plasma. So we find them here also again. And enzymes. So enzymes are also present in blood. Not all, some enzymes are present in blood. The last category of substance which is found in plasma is cholesterol. Liver synthesizes cholesterol and it secretes that into blood. So cholesterol from synthesized from liver is actually poured into blood and then it is transported by plasma. This cholesterol is required for vitamin D synthesis. It is also required for formation of steroid hormones and this cholesterol is also required in plasma membrane in plasma membrane as it provides strength to plasma membrane in plasma membrane it provides 
strength. Cholesterol is also required for synthesis of bile salts. For synthesis of bile salts. Again, when we talk of bile salts, we talk of sodium torocholate, sodium glycocholate that is in digestive system. So for all these things, cholesterol is required. Cholesterol level, normal cholesterol level varies from 50 to 120 milligrams per 100 milliliter of blood. And if cholesterol exceeds this limit, then it is believed that it affects the blood vessels or heart. So about cholesterol, these are the important things and cholesterol is also present in plasma. So now we have seen what all things are there in plasma, though it is mainly water, but it has inorganic substances, proteins, which we have classified in various categories and other things. In other things, we include everything that is food, waste, uh, substances like hormones and vitamins, cholesterol, even antibodies because they are present in serum part. And this is what is there in plasma. And if we sum up all these things, we should be able to understand the functions which are performed by plasma. So after plasma, now from the next segment, we'll start with the corpuscles like RBCs, WBCs and plates.